had no intention to write another book on Mary. Can I tell you why? <laughs> I mean, I didn't think I was qualified. I didn't think I was smart enough or whatever. And I was talking to one of the top Catholic editors in New York. And he said, uh, Father, he said, I want you to do me a favor. I said, we went. He said, I want you to write me a book on Mary. About 100, 125 pages. I said, are you serious? And he said, yeah, I'm serious. He said, we need, we need a lot of hope. We need inspiration today. He said, so I, I would like you to, to write a book on Mary. I went, wow. Oh, okay. I hung up and literally, this is the truth, I started getting flooded with all kinds of ideas. And uh, I knew I didn't want to write another theology book another Mariology book. But what struck me is a lot of uh, women, especially that I've talked to over the years, they said, we can't identify with Mary because we put her on a pe this pedestal, mm -hmm. you know? And we, we, we can't get up there, yeah. <laughs> we can't get up there. about the apparitions and Lourdes. Lourdes and Fatima and Guadalupe and the big ones. But then I got then the other ones. And right now, of course, I've, I've read, maybe studied over maybe a hundred. There's that many? Oh, there's more than a hundred. And so what I, I start seeing certain things in these apparitions. Certain things start coming out to me. And I think Mary was telling me things about I said, I think one of the reasons why people can identify with Mary is because they've, <laughs> they've lost her humanity and and what what i start writing about is her humanity and her femininity and i think in these apparitions and lords fatima well, any of the other ones her her femininity comes out Femin one, one example yeah well she dresses to the nines she never dresses this, she never wears the same thing twice. And, <laughs> and, but the other thing is, usually, usually she's barefooted. I mean, she's dressed great, but, but no shoes. And I, and I said to myself, why? So I said to Mary, in my prayer, I said, you don't like shoes, huh? And, and, and then it done. I think this is what the thing is. This is my, this is me now, okay? I think in every apparition, she tells us who she is and where she's from. Because her shoes, the last thing she says to, to uh, the Archangel Gabriel, she says, behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to your will. And then a Gabriel leaves. Handmaids, they didn't wear shoes. She's still a servant of the Lord. She still sees herself as servant of the Lord. Yeah. But, but, here's an interesting thing. In most of all the apparitions when she's barefoot, she has a rose in each, each foot. She likes golden roses. That sort of thing. I said, why, why one flower? Well, some, some of the scholars think because of the two natures of Jesus, human and divine. That's kind of a deep thing. But the other thing is, I think what she's doing, she's telling us where she's from because the root, the root word Nazareth means flower. And I think she's telling us, hey, I'm the handmaid of the Lord and I'm, 
and I'm from Nazareth. Look at my feet. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good question. But one of the things I discover is Mary always brings us back to Jesus. Mary is the intercessor. She's our mother. We believe when before Jesus died on the cross, okay, uh, Jesus is dying there on the cross. He just gave us uh, the sacraments on Holy Thursday night, which was the night before. He gave us his body and blood. We believe that. Yeah. Before he dies, he said, I'm going to give you the, the, the gift of my, my life, my love. I'm going to give you my mom. So he gives us his mom. There's a Hebrew, Emmy means my mom. And sometimes in my prayer life, I, I, this is the personal stuff, I call her Emmy, my, which means my mother. Yeah. And uh, she is. So I pray to my mom. When we need something, a lot of times when we were younger, where do we go? Mom first. Then she says something to dad. <laughs> Right? So, we, Mary, we go to Mary, we say, Emmy, mom, mom, I, I need your help. I think all these apparitions that Mary has, okay, which, you know, the, the point is why I'm a big guy. There's no one apparition better than another apparition, all right? You can't say that Lourdes is better than Fatima or Fatima is better than Guadalupe. Or if I go, what about Our Lady of the Rocks? And the people go, who? They don't know that one. You know what I mean? I think that Mary in, in the apparition continues, what she's doing is she's continuing the works, the, the public ministry of Jesus, her son, because he knows that that people are more attractive to to a woman, especially yeah. one who's beautiful. Because in, 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 he's, he's, in all these apparitions, yeah. most of them, not all, but a lot. You know what what the, the visionaries say? They call her the beautiful lady. She's the beautiful lady. Yeah. Her beauty, her beauty mesmerizes people. And very seldom does she ever say, don't be afraid of me, don't be afraid. Yeah. Because she's, her beauty, she's so gorgeous. Yeah. She's drop dead gorgeous, usually. Yeah. Yeah. I call her that in my own prayer life. A lot of times I call her beautiful lady. And, yeah. and she uh, draws us. It, yeah, and she always points us, she directs us to Jesus. And if she's doing, she's continuing the public ministry of Jesus, she's, she's doing the work of Jesus. Yeah. Because, but the other thing is that during the apparitions, when, when she speaks, she doesn't always speak, though. Like Our Lady of Knock in Ireland, she doesn't say one word. Okay. And in, in a couple of other places, she does not say a word. But her, just her presence, her presence, she's there for people. People know that their mother is there. The Irish people knew during their, their time, their, their problems at that time of history, they, the Irish knew she's there. Mom, mom, mom is there. Yeah.